on my right, I have uh, Ms. Yulene Wojta, I pronounced that correct? Yes. Uh, our Secretary General from the Ministry of Education, Culture, and Sports, and Youth. And youth. Um, sitting on her right, we have Cassandra Janssen, our Secretariat, who has also been a great assistance in getting us this far um, to do this presentation this evening. Uh, on my left, I have my department head, Mark Arnold. He is a department head at the Department for the Interior and Kingdom Relations. So you can see I'm sitting around some very strong people that has helped me prepare this presentation for you tonight. My name is Asani Ellis. I am a policy worker at the Department for the Interior and Kingdom Relations. Uh, at that department, we work on donor aid um, identification and implementation coordination. Those are some um, very um, um, complex terms, but um, it simply means that there's um, different donor um, aid funds available for St. Martin, and at our department, we identify them and we try to um, go through the implementation um, phase with the relevant stakeholders, um, if it's an execution department, um, to make sure that um, we benefit from the funds that we're trying to access. Tonight, uh, sorry, this evening, we will be doing um, a presentation on the EU Culture Program. It is a, it is a cooperation project. It is um, actually, um, this program started from a European Union work plan for culture, which sets out priorities for the period of 2015 to 2018. The work plan seeks to address key challenges facing cultural organizations and entrepreneurs in the creative and culture sectors by means of a grant. Okay, so I believe it's important to also provide the objective of this presentation. The objective is to inform culture stakeholders about this opportunity. So I believe it's best that we start now. I don't know if anyone else will be walking in, but they will grab part of it. In the presentation agenda this afternoon, we have, um, we'll be discussing the program priorities and the targeted projects, the available budget, the timetable, the admissibility requirements, eligibility criteria, the award criteria, funding conditions, and follow up, the follow up and outlook. Let's start by discussing the program priorities and targeted projects. The priorities of this program get at addressing the challenges that uh, creative industry uh, stakeholders face is um, transnational mobility, audience development, capacity building. Uh, so to elaborate on what they mean by uh, transnational mobility, under the priority transnational mobility, the mobility of artists and professionals as well as the transnational circulation of cultural and creative works is essential. The aim is to promote cultural exchanges, intercultural dialogue, and understanding for cultural diversity and social inclusion. Under the priority audience development, which is the second one, B, one day of this, I don't want to touch anything else. I wonder if the, if the laser works. I won't try. <laughs> On the, um, the priority audience development, they are trying to um, bring people and culture closer together. So it aims to engage people and communities in experiencing, enjoying, and valuing arts and culture. Uh, audience development is about doing something together with audiences rather than doing something for them. And on the uh, last priority, uh, capacity building. Capacity building means helping cultural operators to further develop their skills and um, interna internationalize their careers in order to facilitate access um, to professional opportunities. Um, that can be done via different um, uh, options. It can be via digitization, so media. It can be done via new business models, models, trainings, workshops um, for these um, artists. And yeah, I've also mentioned that one. <laughs> I've mentioned the last one already. Okay, so let's talk about the targeted projects shortly. There are two targeted projects. 
sort of projects, again, classifications of projects. Category one, which uh, these projects involve um, um, a project leader. There needs to be at least one lead organization and at least two other partners having their legal seat in at least three different countries. Here you can receive a maximum EU funding of up to 200,000 euros. So when we see a project leader, there needs to be at least one institution, one organization that submits the application, and he needs to partner with at least two other institutions from other countries and territories. We'll speak more about that later and why St. Martin is strategically positioned to fulfill that, um, that role with our, um, due to our geographic position here in the Northeast Caribbean. Um, category two, which um, I'm not gonna say we're out of, we, we can't, we, we, we can't, we're not in this category, um, is for larger scale cooperation projects. And um, you can receive a maximum of two million euros, but here you need um, to have at least five partners from five, let me see, from at least six different countries. So that's a much bigger envelope. And maybe it would be better if we are actually making an attempt and applying for this um, program for the first time to start with a smaller um, category. We'll see. The available budget. Um, okay, so the total available for the, cult for the culture sub pro program budget is estimated at around 318 million. And that is for the period of 2014 to 2020. So each year, Throughout the duration of the, pro of the program, the European Commission will publish an annual work program indicating the budget devoted to cooperation project for that particular year. So what that means is that this program is gonna continue running annually until 2020. The opportunity that we have available now will come again once more next year and probably the year after. The last two years, I'm not too sure because most of the time these um, programs require um, 18 to 24 months implementation, but we'll see if they'll continue running it until 2020. That's still to see. Okay, um, we're also gonna discuss a little bit about um, the contributions. So financial contributions from the EU um, cannot exceed 60% of the eligible costs for category one projects. So what that means is if your total budget for your um, project activities is 300,000 euros, um, they will finance 60% of 300,000 euros. And you will have to finance the rest. If it is 100,000 euros, they will finance 60%. And you will have to finance the rest. If it's 20,000 euros, that's the scheme that they are working with. But the maximum amount is 200,000 euros. And uh, for the largest um, scale projects, I believe it is at 50%. So they will finance 50% of what you're requesting. So if it's over 200,000 euros. Okay, and last but not least, the agency um, does reserve the right not to distribute all funds available. That's a very tricky, um, um, uh, uh, we call it, um, can I even call it ordinance? It's a little tricky. Um, aspect of the program because they say, hey, there's 318 million available, but if you don't do your homework, you won't be able to access it. Uh, I would more or less give you the timeline um, that we will have to follow if we would like to um, submit a grant. Right now for 20, um, 2015, we're a bit, um, we're a bit late. Um, the publication of the call for proposals was in July 2015. So they published it on the internet and the European websites. I believe more or less about a month ago is when I was um, um, contacted by one of my contacts in Brussels that, hey, there's this opportunity available for St. Martin. You should apply for it. You know, it's, um, it seems right up our alley. Uh, at that time, I got in contact with our different stakeholders here in St. Martin. And we started this process of um, um, assessing our ability to participate. The deadline for the submission of this year is the first Wednesday of October. That's just then two weeks away. Which the first Wednesday of October 2015. Which oh, wow. <laughs> I will have to check my calendar. If someone has, can find sooner than me, they can go ahead and shout it out. Seventh. Seventh. We don't have much time. 
Um, but uh, that shouldn't um, that shouldn't um, that shouldn't it shouldn't let us, um, uh, it shouldn't discourage us. There will be another opportunity next year. But if we can actually um, uh, accumulate the necessary baseline information that's required by the 7th of October, we can actually submit a grant and go through the process of it being evaluated, which is a six months process. And information to the applicants will be provided um, in March 2016. What they do at this stage is they um, return uh, they inform you whether your grant has been approved, awarded, or not. And if it has been, good, um, great. If it has not, they give you um, uh, feedback as to why it has not been awarded so you can improve and try again. So it's actually a pretty good process. Um, and then, of course, in April, then, if you are, if you are awarded a grant, um, you would sign the grant agreements. And then the start date of the action will be any time between May and December 2016. It is more or less the same thing for the larger projects. So now let's go into some details. Let's talk about the admin admissibility procedure. That's why we're actually here this evening, to create some stakeholder inclusion. Um, the current methodology um, that we um, um, follow to access funds from um, these sort of culture funds, there's a piece missing in that method methodology. Um, how do you expect us to, um, for example, submit a successful grant within two or three months when we are not fully aware of the stakeholders' needs and wants? What sort of actions they require? This is supposed to be, um, uh, the Department of Culture, for example, should um, be able to um, have uh, a database or some sort of information from the different stakeholders that are aligned to this um, grant scheme. So we do have to do some homework and have some documentation before we reach the stage of um, actually um, applying for this grant. So the new methodology, actually, let me paint this picture for you. In the current methodology, um, the European Union opens its arm to St. Martin and say, hey, welcome, there's a grant available. In the new methodology, in the missing piece of the puzzle, what we're actually trying to say is that St. Martin, by doing our homework and doing stakeholder inclusion um, um, practices, we're telling, we're turning it around and we're telling the EU, hey, welcome to St. Martin. We have, um, grant, we have um, opportunities for culture grants in St. Martin. That's actually the object that we're trying to accomplish um, by this, in, in this evening's um, presentation and actually fitting the missing piece of the puzzle that is so necessary to um, acquire access to these grants. Eligibility criteria. Why is St. Martin strategically positioned as a regional sub-hub? Now, this is the interesting stuff. Um, <clears throat> for example, like I mentioned before, for the smaller projects, um, grants, you would have to cooperate with at least two or three other, other territories. Within the Northeast Caribbean alone, there exist St. Mart, St. Bart's, St. Martin, Anguilla, Sabre, Stacia, and St. Martin. So I've counted at least four different associations to Europe there alone. This is where we actually gain bonus points because that shows the cultural diversity that exists within the Northeast Caribbean alone. We have um, French St. Martin, which is France, we have St. Bart's, which is an overseas country to France. We have Anguilla, which is an overseas country to the United Kingdom. We have Sabre Station in St. Martin, who are overseas countries to the Netherlands, Holland. So that's one of our um, um, eligibility criteria, and actually one of our bonus points that makes us um, actually um, uh, one of the more successful candidates that would submit a grant. Um, also, um, eligible applicants must be active in the cultural and creative sectors as defined in Article 2 of the Regulation Number 1295-2013. Sounds like a very serious statement, huh? I've done, um, I went and I've looked for this um, document, actually, as part of my work. And hmm, what it actually says is um, any activity cultural activity related to media, 
culture, capitals of culture or heritage, can be considered um, a cultural and creative, uh, as can be considered part of cultural and creative sectors. Um, media, culture, capitals of culture and heritage are four themes that uh, came out of previous European Union um, programs that they had ongoing. So they want to actually see uh, applicants submit grant proposals that mimic these previous programs. And based on the environment that exists in St. Martin, our impressive cultural village, our impressive um, car um, carnival, um, the many foundations that participate in um, the, uh, different cultural activities here in St. Martin, almost every week there's a festival in St. Martin. I'm quite sure we can fill up, um, we can actually fill up a list of activities um, for this grant. To help paint this picture, a better picture then, I would like to um, present to you one of the winning, um, the awarded grants from last year's um, um, cycle, the 2014 cycle. It was the Blackboard Music Project. So we can take a look of, at the eligible activities um, that they um, presented and were awarded. First of all, the Blackboard Music Project is an international development and exchange project aimed at increasing the quality and quantity of concerts for young audiences in Europe. The participants will participate in young audiences, music conferences, and workshops that include a producer's forum. There will also be young audiences music award ceremonies, and they will be dubbed YAM Awards, if I am pronouncing it correct. That's, a, that's what they actually dubbed it, YAM Awards. Okay, I hope that um, paints a very clear picture. Um, it was very difficult for me to try and take the very technical um, text that's um, this thick, you know, literally, um, from the European Union um, um, programs and projects and present it in a format that's, um, 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 that, can, that, you, so that you can understand in a very um, short period. It's, um, this was a good illustration of, um, of a potential um, project that could be successful in the Northeast Caribbean, in St. Martin. Um, and it just requires some groundwork and some footwork. Uh, I believe before we wrap up the presentation, it's important to um, explain to you how we will be um, um, assessed based on the grant proposal that we submit. Um, you will be assessed on relevance. When the EU assesses the relevance of the application, the contribution to the objectives and priorities of the scheme is reviewed. So the priorities and the, um, and the objectives that I mentioned earlier, they will be reviewing them. And here we can receive a maximum of 30 points. Uh, the second criteria, quality of the, uh, of the content and activities. Here the EU assesses the quality of the content and activities by, um, by reviewing how the project is implemented. So they're going to see whether or not um, there is stakeholder inclusion, whether or not there's commitment, some sort of endorsement letter signed by different stakeholders. The third criteria, communication and dissemination of said content and activities. When the EU assesses the communication and dissemination, of said content and activities, they review what is the project's approach to communicating, communicating its activities and to sharing knowledge and experiences, experiences with the sector and across borders. The maximum amount of point, points we can get here is 20. The fourth and last evaluation criteria is the quality of the partnership. Here the EU assesses the quality of the partnership and they review what is the quality of the partnership in terms of effective implementation and sustainability. So actually after the project is complete, is there um, some sort of sustainability that, can, um, that, that is established? Um, this can actually be the, the relevant impetus that is needed to create a I would call it a art consortium. Now my friend Alston from the Samadhi Carnival Development Foundation is going to watch me say Samadhi Development Foundation, Carnival Development 
is an Arsenal Consortium, that is true. And here we can actually, it's mostly focused on Carnival though, and here we can actually broaden the scope and actually developing an arts consortium that reflects all creative sectors and all performing arts. Okay, so some other information that you may find relevant. Um, the EU grant is a direct financial contribution to finance a project intended to help achieve an EU policy objective. So here, the EU policy objective is cooperation. Cooperation between different OCTs. So the ability for us to um, um, submit a project that um, cl um, clusters, pools the interests of the artists within the Northeast Caribbean. Uh, organization like the Saman Carnival Foundi um, Development Foundation is one of those key organizations that we will look to because of the infrastructure that already exists at the Carnival Village and the large festival that they already um, have here in St. Martin. Acceptance of an application by the EU does not constitute EU grant equal to the amount requested by the beneficiary. So we can submit that we want 200,000 euros, but they can tell us, hey, that sounds great, but um, we will only finance maybe um, 50,000, 60,000, this, this aspect of the project, that aspect of the project. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, right now we have to look at the follow-up and the outlook. I've asked you all to come to this presentation. So where, where do we leave from this presentation? Um, do you have any project proposals? What do you need funding for? These are the type of difficult questions I am asking myself, you know, and I'm sure the culture department also have their ideas and their projects, but it will be important and necessary to look for stakeholder inclusion. I've asked everyone's, um, for everyone to fill out the attendance list that is somewhere around there. Um, there will be a follow-up after this presentation via um, email. We would like to send you a questionnaire where you can, we can provide us some baseline information, some indicators about what sort of projects, um, proposals you would like to see. So for example, services, technical assistance, like would you like to see some um, workshops organized? Or would you like to see some events organized? What sort of events, et cetera? From that point, we can move to developing a territorial strategy. That is very important for the European Union. They need to see that we have a strategic approach towards accomplishing these actions, and the outcome is going to be something sustainable. So they want to actually see that we have a strategy to accomplishing this. And then, because it is a collaborative project, we're going to have to look at the regional strategy. We're going to have to expand from the territorial strategy to make it a regional strategy. And it is quite easy. St. Martin is somewhat of a sub-hub, so the interest of St. Martin is somewhat the interest of the, region, of the region also. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the presentation. In conclusion, we need to work together. I've um, provided this picture of um, a fruit tree, and a very tall fruit tree, and the only way you can actually um, pick fruits from this tree is by working together. And that's actually what we need to actually um, do to tap into this fund. The Territorial Strategy for Innovation Project has been developed to enhance the interest and commitment to building innovation-based economies in St. Martin. All right, that's a very general statement, but what it means is that there, um, the, 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 the governments of the overseas countries and territories have expressed the interest to diversify our economy through innovation. Um, what is the objective of this presentation? It is to have stakeholder consultation. Good governance is a major cost-cutting subject that will be taken into account through the consensus building and the involvement of all stakeholders. Um, this is a very important um, um, aspect of the, uh, of the strategy making for the project leaders that are in Brussels. So the policy makers working on accessing the available funds must elevate that, illustrate that the innovation strategies that we have developed um, was developed with stakeholder inclusion. Thus, we have our presentation this night, to, um, tonight with different relevant stakeholders that we have invited. A number of them did not show up. Um, it's Wednesday night, it's ladies night at Tantra. 
I'm not sure why, but um, okay, we'll continue. Uh, in tonight's presentation, we're going to look at the framework of the project, the timeline, the timeline aligned to the implementation of the project, the evaluation criteria, the available budget, the competitive aspects of the grant scheme, our competitive advantage, and then a question and answer session. And of course, last uh, outlook. So the framework of the project. Mm. The global objective of this project is to enhance the sustainable development of OCTs through innovative solutions for economic diversification and to improve regional and global competitiveness. The specific objectives of this project are to support the reinforcement of our innovation capacities, uh, to encourage regional and sectoral cooperation when appropriate, to enhance the links between the main stakeholders, for example, these stakeholders could be from the private sector, research institutions, education institutions, and public authorities, provide elaborate elaborations for the implementation of pilot projects. So there will be a grant available to us of up to 200,000 euros for innovation projects or innovation related projects. And we have to elaborate um, the, the, the pilot, uh, elaborate about the pilot projects we would like to pursue for innovation. Um, now you might ask how do we um, um, plan to accomplish these um, activities, well, that is uh, partly a task of the innovation manager team. Um, the innovation manager team is um, myself. On my right, we have Yulin Waita, and <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are part of the team, uh, and Cassandra. Um, they are part of the innovation lab, which is an um, organization that exists here in government um, uh, that started a couple of years ago. Um, I cannot speak as strongly about it as Yulin and Cassandra, but maybe you would like to say something shortly, maybe? No? We can go on? At the end. Okay. But uh, the intention is actually um, um, uh, streamline innovation within government also. That was uh, <coughs> one of the objectives of the Innovation Lab. So um, within this team, uh, the task um, is as follows. Each OCT government um, must officially appoint the Innovation Manager and the team in charge of ma managing the process for territorial strategies for innovation. In consultation with local stakeholders, the innovation manager will set up and chair an advisory board. So right now, the advisory board consists of myself and we, I would hope the people who are helping me from the innovation lab. This board can be expanded and we would hope to have um, some very strong stakeholders to help us expand this advisory board. The completed innovation manager team will be in charge of making um, assessment of local opportunities for innovation, the development of our strategy for innovation, developing action plans, and its implementation via pilot projects. The innovation, oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. So now we're gonna talk about the timeline aligned to the implementation of this project. Unlike um, the culture program, which I presented a, b a bit earlier, the innovation manager project is a piece of fruit in our hand. It's already been picked from the tree. The culture program is, um, is, um, is actually um, a fruit that's still up in the tree and we have to reach to get it. Within um, this timeline that they have given us, if we follow the procedures they have um, provided, we will be able to access um, pilot projects to help stimulate streamline innovation within our economy. So what are they actually asking from us? Um, so far we have established um, advisory board. We've held local kickoff meetings. We've had consensus building um, to develop analysis of the key sectors and quality of existing technologies and practices. And we have conducted an conducted an analysis of innovation support needs and wants. 
Um, this session tonight is to is all part of that process which I just uh, mentioned there of um, trying to get um, information from relevant stakeholders who are involved in innovation activities. Um, and let me say, when I'm talking about innovation activities, I believe I, 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 um, I owe you some sort of explanation as to what's considered innovation. Uh, there are some themes at the European level that's um, um, considered innovation. I can give you an example of some. Um, sustainable energy is considered innovative. Um, green economy is considered innovative. But what they're actually asking us to do is to develop a strategy based on our local environment that says um, what is innovation for St. Martin and how do we um, say we are going to diversify our economy, strengthen our economy into these innovation activities. So uh, right now at this stage, we need to move on to the design of our territorial innovation strategy and action plan. I believe that is somewhere around F, yes. Submission of the approved territorial strategy and action plan. If I am correct, that should be completed by end of November. So we're the, the actual process starts now in September. We're busy doing the consultation with different stakeholders right now to finalize this, um, this territorial strategy for innovation. Um, the, the, the strategy and action plan will need to be approved by um, the European Commission and probably will actually be um, assessed, you know, by um, the technical assistant team that, is sit that sits in Brussels. So they're going to um, try and assist us in um, submitting a, a, a viable um, policy, sorry, strategy that will actually um, um, stimulate innovation within St. Martin. Um, because at um, the very end of December, they expect us to submit um, pilot project proposals. Those pilot project proposals will be evaluated by an evaluation committee, three independent key experts sitting in three different rooms, and they will be ranking the submitted pilot projects. Just like the culture scheme, there's a ranking list. Um, if 20 projects, and if 20 projects are submitted, um, they will be ranked from best to um, worst, and the uh, best projects will be, um, I would say, given first preference for funding, and the worst project will be given less for, less preference for funding. Um, I see a couple of um, um, concerned faces, but I will explain that process a bit better in the slides to come. Uh, I won't elaborate more on this timeline, but what's important to extract from it is December, we have to submit our pilot project proposals um, in, I believe, May. They expect to sign the contracts um, for the accepted pilot project proposal. Proposals are the awarded pilot project proposals. Here, once more, again, is a nice slide that I had from the previous presentation about the methodology that we currently work with. Um, the OCTA technical assistance team is trying to um, help us work on um, uh, accessing some of the horizontal funds that um, we don't usually tap into from the European Union. Um, by following this strategy, the timeline that we had just um, on, the, on the screen, they're actually saying that we um, will be more successful in accessing uh, more of these horizontal funds like the culture program, et cetera. And that is actually the missing piece of the puzzle, stakeholder inclusion, where our, old, our current methodology is, after says, here, here's this, here's this great opportunity, and they'll have their hands open, and we have to come to them, and we have two months to prepare ourselves, and our new methodology that we want to work with is stakeholder inclusion. We have baseline information, so we're selling OCTA. As soon as that proposal comes out, says, hey, Come to us, we have a proposal ready for you. All right. Okay, so the reason why we have to start working with this new methodology is because um, 
the name of the game is open competition and there is an evaluation criteria with the open competition so we will be evaluated so we will be evaluated on excellence quality and implementation efficiency and impact uh, if you give me a second I would actually like to speak a little bit about the different um, evaluation criteria. On the excellence, our proposals will have to be assessed based on clarity and pertinence of the objectives, credibility of the proposed approach, soundness of the concept, quality of the proposed project, and the level of proposed innovation. That's on the ex um, excellence. On the quality, and implementation efficiency. Our, our proposal will be assessed based on quality of the proposed implementation, quality of the project team, and ownership of the project. So here, um, stakeholder inclusion will be very important. And the third one, which is um, impact. Our proposal will be assessed based on direct impact of the project, sustainability of the project, possibility of multiplication of the project in other OCTs as well. For each criterion, proposals will be given scores of 0 to 5. So excellence, quality, and impact will be given a score of 0 to 5, and there's a maximum score of 15 that we can receive. Now here is a slide I was telling you about that will clarify some of the budget um, discussions that we were having, the available budget. So the total available budget for pilot projects is 1.5 million euros. They are financing, the European Union is financing 80% of the project. So you will have to finance as an OCT, the lead organization, or whichever funds you choose to blend, the other 20%. Uh, the maximum budget of one project is 200,000 euros. Now if you do a little math, if you have 20 overseas countries and territories that are eligible, you'll recognize that 1.8 million euros does not cover 20 countries submitting proposals for 200,000 euros. So which means, once more, open competition, there will be a ranking list, and we just have to submit a proposal that is better, better than the other OCTs. Um, I find it's possible, and the reason why is because we have competitive advantages. Uh, collaborative pilot projects with two, three or more OCTs uh, as participants um, is one of those competitive advantages. In St. Martin, we have um, Saber Station once more, um, St. Bart's and Grilla as OCTs neighboring us. And um, we are somewhat strategic strategically positioned as the economic sub hub for this region. Um, one of our other competitive advantages is um, pilot projects, duplicating, uh, replicating innovation projects already, already implemented in Europe. So these will be better scored on the excellence, for example, so we'll actually get bonus points for collaborative pilot projects and pilot projects duplicating or replicating innovation projects already implemented in Europe. So impact and excellence, we can get um, um, double points and bonus points for. So when I speak about um, duplicating or replicating innovation projects that exist in Europe, um, we can develop centers of excellence within the EU innovation themes. So Martin, we have already invested um, a considerable amount of money in certain um, um, uh, uh, in, in infrastructure, different infrastructures in St. Martin. Um, and compared to the Northeast Caribbean, we have some, um, some, some of the best um, facilities within um, communications, transportation, culture, education. Maybe agriculture we're falling behind and sustainable energy we're falling behind, but we can make an attempt um, to, um, to, to progress. The first four is very important for us. And when I say um, centers of excellence, it is um, a very key European Union theme, the term centers of excellence. Um, and here we can actually gain bonus points. Is that clear? Yeah? 
the part about the open competition, you know, competitive advantage. Like I said, this, chart, this slide was going to be a lot, um, this presentation was going to be a lot shorter. The conclusion is we need to work together once more. Um, the other aspect where we can gain um, bonus points is quality of and implementation efficiency. So the quality of the proposed implementation, quality of the project team, and ownership of the project. That is actually what we still need to um, somewhat um, accomplish, you know, our strength, strengthen, strengthen in St. Martin. Uh, it, it, it requires um, stakeholder inclusion, and that's why we invited different stakeholders tonight to attend the presentation. The next um, steps, of course, will be a follow-up session, and it provide, we can also provide somewhat of an outlook. Um, if you are the stakeholders that came to attend the uh, culture presentation are willing, we can also, also send you um, a questionnaire related to this um, project. And we can assess your needs and wants, and we can try and um, put them, take them into consideration while we develop the territorial strategy for innovation. And these are the actual steps that we actually have to follow to actually lead to the call end date, which is in December. So we have some work cut out for us. <laughs>